Thank you very much, dear brother priests and mission chaplains of the diocese for joining me in thanksgiving for the gift of priestly vocation on this day that I celebrate my 38th anniversary in the presbyteral ministry. You are not far from the kingdom of God. We heard Jesus in today's gospel affirming the scribe like a teacher commending a student for a good answer. You know, he reminds me of one teacher whom I had in high school who wasn't satisfied when we answered her questions with lines memorized from the textbook. She would usually follow up and say, Okay, in other words, or if the memorized line is long, she would say, okay, in short, or in summary, or in a nutshell. In today's gospel, the scribe is repeating what Jesus himself directly quoted from the Bible. But he dares to put it in his own words. And he also adds that these two commandments are worth more than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. Instead of saying, very good, well, Jesus says, hey, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Another old teacher of mine, also in high school, had an interesting way of commending us when we gave good answers. She would say, or he would say, orchids for excellent, roses for very good, sampagita for good. Well, Jesus gave Roses, not, not orchids, because what he said was, you are not far. It doesn't mean you are there already. You are not far. Very good. Pero hindi pa siya excellent. But why was Jesus impressed? While the other teachers, like the Pharisees, tended to multiply the Ten Commandments into hundreds of statutes and ordinances, Jesus, the rabbi, was more concerned about summarizing or simplifying the commandments. I think what he really meant to communicate to the Pharisees was, come on, guys, let's not make the faith too complicated. Minsan, may mga taong ang simple-simple, pinakakomplicate. What comes to my mind when he speaks about the two loves as the first and the second of all the commandments are the two stone tablets on which the Ten Commandments were written when Moses received them from God. And this is probably why we often see the Ten Commandments divided into two clusters. But they're divided into clusters of three on the one hand and seven on the other hand. Three and seven, not five and five. The first three having to do with the first three commandments, which are all about our relationship with God. You shall have no strange God before me. You shall uh, not mention God's name in vain. You should uh, keep holy the Lord's day. 
And then, from the fourth to the tenth, they're all about fellow human beings. The late Cardinal Sin used to call them the two lines of the cross. The vertical, meaning love of God. And the horizontal, meaning love of neighbor. And according to him, in order for the two to be authentic, they had to intersect. That love of God is not true if it does not intersect with love of neighbor. Let us now briefly look at each one. In the first love, the first of all the commandments, which is of course quoted by Jesus from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 and 5. And this is called the great Shema by the Jewish people. They're supposed to memorize it by the age of 13, coming of age, the Bar Mitzvah. Well, in Deuteronomy 6, God qualifies the kind of love that He expects of us in three phrases. Love God, okay, but make sure with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength. In other words, you cannot call it true love if it is half-hearted. True love has to be whole-hearted. Well, my own vocation, I think of it as an invitation to true love that we give our lives not half-heartedly, but wholeheartedly. Why? Well, because it is supposed to be our response to the wholehearted love of God for us, whom He made in His image and likeness. If we learn to love like God, then we must learn to love wholeheartedly like God. There is one old poem that expresses this very beautifully. And I am sure most of you, especially those here who belong to my generation, were made to memorize this poem either in high school or in college. It is a poem written by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. She wrote it for her husband, who is also a poet, Robert Browning. It is known as Sonnet Number 43, but the real title is How Do I Love Thee? And the poem says, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being and ideal grace. Well, this is just a more poetic way of saying I love you with all my heart, with all my understanding, and with all my strength. Of course, it sounds more romantic in poetry. But listen to the final lines of Elizabeth Barrett Browning in that poem. She says, I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall love I shall but love thee better after death. And now on the second part, the one Jesus calls the second of all the commandments. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
Obviously, he is quoting this again from the Old Testament. Leviticus 19.18, chapter 19, verse 18. But I'm surprised he did not quote it in full. Because if he quoted it in full, ganito siya dapat. Love your neighbor as yourself, for I am the Lord. Kasama yun. Meaning, God is saying, because I am the Lord, and you are my image and likeness, I expect you, you whom I love as myself, to also learn to love your neighbor as yourself. Sa Tagalog, we express it better. Ang maituring ang iba, na parang hindi na iba. To treat others as no longer other. That when you learn to love your neighbor, you allow them to become part of you. Such that what hurts them also hurts you. And what gives them joy also gives you joy. Love is what connects us to one another in such a way that we are able to see in the other not another, but our own selves, our own brother or sister or father or mother or friend. 